Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. Your co-host, Rich Gear here as well, and we have, Doug, we have a guest with us tonight. Yeah, Dr. Jean-Guy Dagnon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Pretty close. Pretty, Pretty close. close. doing good. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah, I wanted him to do that because I know I'd have blown it. You know, that's, that would have that happened. That would be good. good. And uh, he is a guy my, uh, that I admire very much. He's uh, uh, also is one of my mentors because he uh, tries to keep me straight physically and, uh, uh, and mentally. Uh, he's been a, a challenge to keep up with. And my wife works for him, but uh, I appreciate you for uh, all that you do and uh, all you've taught me. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, this uh, book that De Dr. Jerry Ber Bergman Before we get into that, though, why don't you let you tell the audience what you do do, you know? What is it you do, you know? I'm kind of interested in all the titles or all the stuff, you know? Well, the titles are not that important. Not that However, important, but what you uh, do with them. Yeah, actually, well, to just tell you a little bit about my background is I grew up on a farm. And at an early age, uh, one of my main, uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to become a physical education teacher. And uh, I had uh, been to the chiropractor, I've got two brothers and two sisters, been to the chiropractor uh, from the time I was four years old. And my entire life, and one day my chiropractor asked me, he's like, you know, what do you want to do with your life? And I'm like, well, I'd like to be a physical education teacher. And he's like, well, you know, I mean, what about being a chiropractor? I'm like, well, I've never thought of it. So. Uh, I started my first uh, studies were in uh, physical education. I was studying to become a personal trainer. And then after that, I got a degree in nutrition. And then after that, I became a chiropractor. I started a master's, but then my wife said, you need to go to work. <laughs> so <laughs> never completed that. Yeah. And that was it. And, uh, you know, I came, uh, I left Canada about 25 years ago, and I've been in this country ever since. Okay. And I've uh, been a practicing chiropractor now for over 20 years and went a specialty in nutrition and um, you know, loving every minute of it. Yeah. So, yeah, studying is uh, studying and learning and uh, trying to do things better, faster, being more efficient at it and helping people is really a passion of mine, for sure. So you're gonna be real good to help us when we deal with uh, design flaws that you wanna talk about, Doug. And, and right. uh, so why don't you get into that a little bit there and, and uh, it, it, this, this what, book by Jerry Bergman? Jerry Bergman wrote this book, Port of His Design, and this is the argument that evolutionists use you know, to uh, 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 really, it's an excuse, but they they say that we we are suffering because we uh, came up uh, from monkeys and uh, we're paying a price for walking upright. Uh, basically, that's what they're saying is that uh, our spine has got this curve in it, and it uh, really is a vestige of what the monkeys used to have. You know, when they're crawling along full, all fours. And I, I think that we have a chance to maybe put that uh, whole notion to rest here, uh, because it's a <laughs> it's a pretty uh, interesting th uh, idea. But I remember going to a, a debate one time, and that was one of the um, atheists' main arguments was that uh, you know these all these poor designs that uh, uh, couldn't have been something that God had put together, and so. Um, I, I think that uh, we can uh, very easily demolish that argument, uh, and it's uh, something that Jerry Bergman uh, deals with uh, in a lot of things. Uh, they also talked about the, he also talks about how the eye is poorly designed because the retina is in backwards, but there's actually a real good e reason for that too. And, so, and what is it? And the reason is, uh, is that it needs, <laughs> needs this, uh, needs the blood flow uh, uh, behind it, uh, f you know, there's all this uh, exchange of, of, of blood uh, that uh, goes on in your eye that, uh, you know, rapidly swaps out the cells in, in, in okay, behind it. Yeah. And so it's, uh, and it's designed that way because, uh, and if it, and he goes into a lot of reasons, a lot of, detail of, a lot it, of yeah. details of how that I works. find it fascinating that you see everything technically upside down, but your brain sorts it up and flips it right, puts mm -hmm. it right side up. You know, it's it's an amazing uh, thing how the whole body is integrated together and makes things work, even though I, intuitively you think it shouldn't work, uh, but it does. And so the eye is one of those amazing. So amazing we, so we have the spine, which is a, a design of God, and um, you work with the spine all the time. And uh, I've had you work on mine quite a bit, and yeah. uh, and when I uh, when you're done with me, you're, I, I usually appreciate it. 
Yeah, and, and so there's these people that say, well, chiropractors, you don't want to go to them because they're going to uh, hurt you and break your back and uh, all that sort of thing. And um, that's really not, <laughs> not very true. You know, I find it, maybe you, you could tell me, a lot of the uh, manipulation that they do, and we, I don't want to get too far afield, but they don't really do it as, like they used to do it as much. At least I found it in a lot of chiropractors. Because when I was growing up, we called you chiropractors, okay? Because I, I was, you know, we, I didn't Come know. On, Rich. No, I mean, seriously. I can't believe I'm well, hearing this. Because, I mean. <laughs> I, I am leaving right now. Yeah, I, I think you should, you know. But I have since come around, I, I've, I've, I've been converted. Well, what, one of the things that really got me is when I went into a chiropractor's office, and they were still doing the, they would kind of crack your back in, in, the, in the position, but I, they did the x ray on it, and I had been having problems with like a horse, horse throats for years. And I thought it was because I was singing wrong or doing things wrong. Sure. Um, but, and I never told them about that, you know, when they said, what are your symptoms and stuff like that. I didn't think about it. And uh, they came back with the x-ray. They said, well, this is out. These are some of the symptoms. Some of the symptoms can happen from this, this, and this. And I go, horse throat? Wait, I got horse throats. And he says, yeah, you're out. You, this is out of line here. And, uh, you know, I, 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 since I was gone, I've gone to a chiropractor. I've never had a horse throat. Ever. I've never had one since. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, you know, and I know you have to. You do you continue. It's like you know, it's, it's like any kind of thing. You you do maintenance and things of that nature. But mm -hmm. I've noticed that uh, now the horse throat is a part of the product of evolution. You know. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> we, we evolved from a horse. No, sorry. Anyway, I was just, just curious about that because now they they tend to do like little machines that kind of focus in on an instrument. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just rather than yeah. just kind of pushing in with the with the hands like they used to do, they, they use they do uh, traction kind of tables where they stretch out a little bit and that's correct. Yeah. And do that kind of stuff. So I was just I was just curious. It's come a long way, but I mean, I was it was the idea that they, they to, when they try to put you down, they said, well, they said you can cure every disease by the spine. I said I don't know about everything, but there's sure a lot of things they can fix. And uh, and it's interesting. I find out that uh, ever since they've gone the they did the lawsuit back in the 70s or 80s and. Doctors and chiropractors work together quite a bit now. They, they didn't used to, and there used to be a lot of real animosity, and now it seems to be much different. So that's a good thing, I guess, you know? You know, it is, and that's a good point that you're bringing up, because there's probably not a week that goes by right now that uh, we don't have a physician that will refer to our office. That <coughs> never used to happen. Yeah, and just to get back to what you were saying, just for the people that are watching right now is there is a lot of different ways that you can be adjusting the spine, right? And obviously back in the days, people use their hands because that was the main, mm -hmm. this is how the, the founder and the developer of chiropractic, you know, have put that out there, right? Obviously how to uh, do adjustment to the spine, but you know, with uh, research and with science and technology, uh, now we have instrument that we can use to be adjusting the spine where we can find out, you know, exactly how much force is being delivered to the spine and you know, with the frequency and the speed and all that. So there's a lot of things that have come a long way. And then there is a, a range of, depending on what people needs, you know, that will determine, right? This idea that the chiropractor is up a ladder and just jumping on people. <laughs> right? Those days are over. Now, I mean, some people might think that, however, <laughs> right? However, just think about this for a moment that, uh, you know, we take care of just, uh, we have, you know, obviously kids that we take care of in the, in the office. And we also have, uh, you know, people that are, uh, you know, 70, 80, 90 years old right now that we take care of. Mm -hmm. And you just gotta, obviously, you gotta know what you're doing and, and how the, those forces need to be applied and what are the things that can be done or sure. cannot be done. But that's a good point that you're bringing up is, yeah, you know, it comes from a long way. There's a lot of people they don't really know. And, uh, you know, they're by, because they don't know, you don't know what you don't know. I tell that to people all the time. You don't know what you don't know and until you, you can kind of get the experience and understanding it. What you just said was very powerful. It's a, understanding that your nervous system, you know, those nerves are, are going everywhere to your body. So therefore, it has potentially can have an effect on multiple things. And everything. Right? But that is not a design flaw. And I guess that's what we want to get to. It's something that it's like we, what, what, I don't really know how to frame this. Maybe it's, I think, what, why do you think that this is, uh, besides being a believer, obviously, but I mean, just from a, from a scientific viewpoint or whatever, that the spine, Really, it's designed the best way it could do, to do what it's supposed to do for, for the human form, if you will, I guess, you know? Well, actually, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there's no doubt about it, right? I mean, there's even uh, studies now, and uh, obviously there is lots of studies. You know, anybody is trying to keep up in the world of spine, in the world of anything in the human body, you know, that's the reason why we have specialties. 
Um, but when you look at, at research and studies and the way that the spine was designed, right? Of course, yes, uh, you know, according to, you know, his book there, and the, the argument on both sides, lots of people have back pain. And yeah, lots of people have back pain, but there's a lot of different reasons for that, right? I mean, there is explanation for that. It's not because, you know, the spine was a poor design. It's because, you know, when you sit all day, yeah. guess what happened? Right? Mm -hmm. When you're sedentary and when people eat cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, red rice, and pasta, you guys have heard that before, <laughs> right? And your body is inflamed to the max, right? What, what people don't really know and understanding, which we understand much better today, which I know that it's still just a glimpse, but if you're looking at a disc, right? So between the bones, there's a, you know, there's a cushion and the cushion yep. is the disc. Well, when you start having degeneration in your spine, those discs naturally they will start producing chemicals that are pro-inflammatory. So what that means is to try to protect you and to try to protect you, those chemicals are producing inflammation to tell your brain, don't overdo it, don't overdo it, don't overdo it, right? So naturally the body is designed to be, you know, to be self-healing. It has the ability to repair itself, you know, however, when there's damage, the body has, you know, the tools to be able to tell you, hey, you know what, just make sure that if you start overdoing it, your body's going to tell you that. Right, so which is truly amazing that when the spine is functioning the way it should, then those you don't have any of that. So uh, interestingly enough, right, I'm, I'm reading the book well, and they're talking. Nice. These are compressed. Yeah, that's aspirin. right. They're, okay. they're, they're talking about slip disc and they're talking about herniated disc, and uh, you know when you don't uh, when you don't move well and you don't you know your 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 body is not you know you you sit all day. Now I just want you. I, I want to. Just kind of show you this to you guys tonight because that's one in the book they talk about this William guy, this Dr. Williams, right? Talking about flexion when you when you're doing movement like this, this would be one of the good things to do for your for your back, which is, I mean, there's probably thousands of studies now that shows that you know extension exercise is better than flexion. Now, when people sit, if you look here at your ankle between your foot and your leg, your this is inflection. When you look between your leg and your your thigh, this right. is inflection. So you're better off being like, right? right? Now watch this. This is inflection. This is inflection. This is inflection. That's mm -hmm. what people do all day. You have computers. Your entire body is inflection. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Which is the worst thing that you can do. So they also talk about the McKenzie exercise, which they are extension exercise going in that, in that manner that, you know, there's a lot of people when they start doing those, uh, they can see that any of their uh, issues start going away and they start doing better. Right? They also do, which is very interesting, they, they do MRIs of uh, people now that have chronic back pain and they tell the radiologist, we don't want you to look at the bone at all. We just want you to look to see if you see any fat into the muscle. And what they find is when people have chronic low back pain, they will always find this thing called fatty infiltration into the muscle. When you find fat into the muscles, that means those muscles are not working. Mm -hmm. They're lazy. Okay. They're just not firing. Okay. Right? Which is like interesting to be able to, to see that and understand that how over time, yes, there's a lot of people with chronic low back pain. The answer is yes. I mean, in a lifetime now, it says in the United States, you're going to have about 8 out of 10 people who have back pain. Right? Is it common? Yeah. But it doesn't mean it's normal. Common and normal is not the same. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Right? And then the, the common part of it is that uh, we all are uh, products of, of, of the fall and of... Uh, of the sin nature where we um, uh, accumulate uh, problems in our whole life, not only in, in the back, but in, uh, in the way that we have our lifestyle. Yeah, it's funny you say about inflection. What did you say, what was that, or what is that's, that's term? Everything is inflection? Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when I, I walk around and I, I've got head in my mind, I don't know if I'm doing, doing it right or not, but I walk, I watch old guys, they tend to be like this. And I walk like I, I, I do this all the time. Just mm -hmm. while I'm just thinking about it, I'm, I'm, I'm stretching my back like this. Like because if I don't do it, it's not really going to be good. Well, I'm lucky because I, I get to do a lot of things because I sit at a computer. Yeah. But lately, I've been sitting at the computer a lot because I got to do a graphic piece on there. And yeah, my lower back's hurt. And I go, I got to get downstairs and work on some dioramas and do some physical stuff, you that's know, right. because that's, that's what happens. But I, when I walk, I know I've been doing that for several years as I noticed when you get older yeah your muscle tone is not always as good as it wants to be because you're not out there doing what you used to do when you were 20 and uh, and suddenly you just you find yourself walking like I go no I'm not gonna do that as long as I can think like, I'm gonna try to right. stand up straight right. besides 
I'm a short guy. I'm vertically challenged, man. I don't have any room to mm -hmm. shrink. You know, I, I I don't have any of that, so I got to stretch myself out. So um, now, can you explain a little thing. bit about the uh, the curvature of the spine yeah, and how yeah. how that works? How does that work? Is yeah. So as you can see, in your uh, your spine was designed to have curvature, right? So your your neck should have what we call the lordosis. Where it looks like a C shape, right? Mm -hmm. And okay. after that, you have your thoracic spine, which is like a reverse C shape. And then you have your lumbar spine, which is also like a C shape. And, uh, you know, those curves are needed in order to have, to be structurally sound, to have the least amount of stress on the joints and on the nerves. And you were designed, matter of fact, you know, you go back here, and I, again, I'm reading this book, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of uh, smiling a little bit because, you know, you talk about research. They will find what in the Journal of Anatomy, 1983, it says that, you know, when they, they found that when kids are born, they already have their curves. They're already there. They already have lordosis mm -hmm. in their neck and into their lower back, right? So your, your body, those, those, your spine was designed to have those curvature. This is when you have the least amount of stress on the joints, and it's designed, the way that it's designed to is to sustain the load. Once you start losing the curvature, Right, and you go into yeah. a flexion mode. Yeah. Guess what happened on the stress and on the strain at the front there? You're gonna have less or more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah more. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna start having more more stress and strain. Right. When you go from here, if you have to be like, if you were to put a hundred pounds right here. Yeah. And then you move the spine, you start moving it forward like so, and you still have the same hundred pounds. Right. What's gonna happen is the stress and strain at the front of the spine is gonna be much more. So then it becomes predictable when you see arthritis and degeneration, it's, it's predictable. What causes that to go straight like that? I mean, I just can't figure out why, you, I mean, up in that area. I, Rich, I, are you ready? What? Are you ready, Rich? No. It's called life. Yeah. Okay. Right? It's called life. <laughs> okay. And, what, and, and, and guess what? What that means is, uh, you know, people spend a lot of time in sitting. Yeah. Right? But just imagine from the time you were born, you start, you start walking, you fall on your butt a hundred times a day. Then after that, after you're done walking, then you're going to start running. When you run, you're going to fall. You're going to fall off the swing set. You're going to fall off your yeah. bike. You're going to fall off the mm -hmm. scooter. Then you're going to play sports. You're going to do that for the next 20 years. Then you're going to sit five, seven hours a day. You're going to go to school for 20 years. And then if you're really lucky, then you find a job. You sit for another 20 years. How's that sound? We're doomed, right? At Yale University, now check this out. At Yale University, they did some studies on motor vehicle accident. And what they found is a person could be in a motor vehicle accident as low as nine miles an hour, nine miles an hour, nine, mm -hmm. nine. and you could have permanent damage in your spine, right? So the word on the street is called life, right? I mean, if you live on planet Earth, uh, the chances are is you're going to have some either micro trauma or some big trauma that, you know, that you can do over a period of time that people are going to, you know, their spine's going to break down. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, as you know, in the Western society, Right? The majority of people, what do they do now? We live into an, in the industrialized world where the majority of people and the function that they do and the work that they do is most people are sitting. You pull, yeah. pull this little guy true. out and... That's right. You just pull the phone. What do people do? Right? They're just like, you're texting. What does that look like? People are like this. Yeah. Right? So, there's, so there's many little things that people do that might not be considered a big trauma, like you're in a car accident at 50 miles an hour. However, right, this is not the only thing that will cause your spine to break down. Yeah. If you sit in this particular position where all of your joints are all in flexion and they're not being activated because when you're sitting, there's no demand on the body. As a result of that, right, you're going to get some micro, this is considered to be a micro trauma. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I can tell you, which is very interesting, not long ago I was just reviewing some paper, there's a, there's a medical doctor, I, I believe he was a medical doctor, his name is Dr. Tepio, uh, Tepio Vitamin. this was back in the mid-80s. Uh, there's no human that volunteered for that, so they took animals, and what they did is they immobilized bones in the spine of the animals for a period of time, and then what they wanted to do is they wanted to find out how long does it take before you start seeing arthritis in the spine. And what they found is after 14 days, 14 days, when the spine is not moving properly, you're going to start seeing signs of arthritis. All right. Wow. 14 days. Mm -hmm. So for you and I, right, the moral of the story is we, is we need to move. We were designed to move. And the majority of people today, in, in this country at least, and I, I would say I'm, I'm from Canada, and it's the same thing, is people are not moving enough, right? Nowhere near what they should be moving. Well, at least I take the stairs up and down for five floors, so that helps, you know? Yeah, we, that's, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. that's a good start right there. <laughs>
But uh, as, as you can see, uh, you can have pieces of uh, parts of the spine get out of the joint. Yeah. And they cause something called a subluxation. Yeah, subluxation in the, in the world of chiropractic is when you have bones that are uh, out of alignment, right? When those joints are not in proper alignment, and as a result of that, you're going to have a lot of different things that will start happening, right? You're going to yeah. have issues with the joint <coughs> itself. will have issues with reporting proper information to the brain, either from the brain to, you know, down to whichever that region is and wherever those nerves are going to. So Rich was talking about earlier in the neck area, those nerves are going to your heart, to your lungs, to your thyroid gland, if it's in the upper neck area. This will go to your, you know, anything has to do with balance, you know, the sinuses and all that. So a person could have uh, mid-back pain, but they could also have indigestion, right? So if a person has a subluxation, they could have that. Do I tell people I'm gonna treat and cure their indigestion? I don't tell them that. However, just like you, Rich, Right? You say, hey, I used to have like issues with my throat there, and it's like, I never told the guy. However, from the time I started to have some chiropractic adjustment, then that went away, never came back. Which is kind of interesting, because my mother-in-law was a chiropractor, and she became a chiropractor because she used to have urinary tract infection all the time. Okay. And she was in her 30s when she got her first chiropractic adjustment, right here in her lower thoracic area. And from that moment on, right? She's never had another urinary tract infection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then you're like, well, was a chiropractor trying to treat her mm -hmm. for that? The answer is no, right? So it's for us to be able to understand that, you know, we have a small focus, but it has a broad body implication, meaning right. that it has an effect on other things in the body, yeah. right? So, but it's no different than me telling you, Rich, well, do you think you should eat right? You should think you should eat fruits and vegetables. Well, what is that gonna do for you? Probably a lot of the things you don't even know what it's going to do for you, right? <laughs> Probably, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of things that it's like, like if you exercise, what is that going to do for you? Well, I think about it. I think about it because my, my wife is totally, she can't walk and she can't do anything because that was a, talk about a trauma. trauma. Yeah. That was a serious thing. And so I think about her laying on her back and we, she can't do anything. And I go, and so I'm thinking about all this wear that's going to happen to her just by not doing anything. And, and there's yeah. nothing I can do about it, you know, right. that, that I know of. Yeah. And that's, that's part of that life thing you're talking about sometimes. That, yeah. But when we can do things, we should do. It'd be nice to, it'd be good to do things. But the, the thing what I was interested to is the, is the design is actually really good. Yeah. It's a really good design. You know, the, you talk about, I mean, I, I've always I've been amazed about the curvatures because you got real bad curvature, what do they call it, scoliosis or something? When yeah, the, something's really, when it's the other way around. Scoliosis is when the spine goes from side to side. Oh, is that, that what that is? That would be considered a scoliosis. Oh. But then you also have in the book, they talk about flat back syndrome, right? Flat back is if a person is supposed to have what we call the lordosis, meaning that there's a curve, it looks yep. like a right. C-shape, yep. but now you're losing that, right? But when you, when you are in flexion all the time, right, it's mm -hmm. going to give you this kind of structure really? which okay. people are much more likely to have chronic back pain, right? So this, this thinking to think that your entire spine should be like inflection like this and this would be health, well, I'm gonna tell you right now that this is not the case, folks. That's not the case. Okay? Okay. If you have a spine like this, you're gonna be in big trouble. The, kind sure. you're, the, the spine you're born with is the, is the one you wanna stay with as much long as possible. Yes. I have a qu question for you. Uh, yes, sir. Jerry has written another book uh, uh, called uh, Useless Organs. And, oh, and, and one of them was uh, as well vestigial organs. So they had, there used to be like 180 of them uh, that they didn't know the, the functions of them. And so they uh, said, well, if you take them out, then uh, it doesn't matter. Well, They're just one, spare one, parts. Spare yeah. parts. And, right. and one, of, one of them is, is the tailbone, the co coccyx, right? That's yeah. how you pronounce that. There is, there is uh, a function for the tailbone. And uh, can you tell us what that is? Well, uh, the coccyx would be the bottom part, that's, that would be at the bottom of the sacrum. This is called the sacrum right here in orange. At the bottom of the sacrum you have the coccyx, right? Mm -hmm. So the spinal cord has attachment in your skull bone, which is called your occiput. And then it has another attachment all the way down to your tailbone, right? So there's attachment to the cord, and the cord here you have nerves that are being distributed at every single level. Right? And matter of fact, they talked about the sciatic nerve in that, in that book yeah. quite a bit. Right? The sciatic nerve comes from several levels on each side of the spine that becomes several of those nerves 
from the bottom of the spine and the sacrum and it becomes one big nerve that is running right through here and it will go all the way down to your feet right so what happened is when you have any kind of misalignment or subluxation mm -hmm. right either in your lumbar spine or in your sacrum and the sacrum is connected to your hip so they use the term your sacroiliac joint okay and uh, this area here is absolutely amazing when you start studying that right because this is really the you know the core of you know the main connection between the upper and lower extremity okay so uh, this has a huge impact on you know a person's uh, ability to have a lifetime of either happiness or pain mm -hmm. yeah for sure so if you remove that then it'd be kind of a problem wouldn't it <laughs> if you remove that i think that would be a major problem for sure. <laughs> The, the coccyx, you mean? Coccyx, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, everything uh, you know, the God made uh, in our body is, is uh, there used to be one, one uh, story of a guy, I guess uh, doctors used to routinely, routinely remove the appendix yeah. as part of, uh, oh, yeah. uh, part of, if they went and did abdominal surgery, they'd remove the appendix. Well, now they find out that that's really not not too good of a thing to do. Yeah, when I was in school 25 years ago, they were still teaching that that the appendix had no function. That and the tonsils. So they did not know what was you know. I mean, that was like that was like a spare part. Yeah, that's right. tonsils. <laughs> same thing. I, mean, I had my tonsils out, you know. Yeah. And I got inflamed, nah, and they took they'd yank them out, you know. Now you have to almost be dying of tonsillitis before they take them out. You know? Yeah. Plus, we know that there's a purpose of the tonsil. It's your first line of you know to. Right. protect you for pathogen right so when you understand that your body was designed to heal itself and there's a reason for everything and maybe some of those things were not completely up to par to understand and to know what they do however it doesn't mean that there's no you know there's no reason for them yes so so you offer at uh, your clinic uh, all kinds of things like uh, um, hyperbaric oxygen treatment laser treatment and uh, uh, other things. Uh, you got one more minute, so you can tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we're using. <laughs> I'm not sure if I, in a minute I can do all of this, but you know, we, we we use different tools. You know, I'm I'm willing to investigate just about anything to help people to get better faster and to find the cause of the problem. So yes, at the office we use a hyperbaric chamber, which is basically brings you know pushes oxygen into the body to speed up the healing process. Laser therapy is something that, you know, it's been around now for decades that also will speed up the healing process. So there's uh, many of our tools uh, that we are using and the main purpose is how can we tap into the body's innate ability to heal itself and how can we speed that up? So uh, between the chiropractic and the nutrition and, and, and those tools, you know, we have the ability to, uh, you know, address chronic illnesses and, and to be successful at it uh, a vast majority of the time, which is really exciting. Wow. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed our time with uh, Dr. Jean-Guy Dagnon, and we'll see you next time on Revolution Against Evolution.